Hello to all. Today we will be going to differentiate between the cartilaginous fishes and the bony fishes. Basically, the fishes are actually divided into two categories. One is known as the chondrocythes, and another is known as the osteocythes. Chondrocythes means cartilaginous fishes. Osteocythes means the bony fishes. Now here are some prominent features which will differentiate the cartilaginous fishes. and the bony fishes the very first character is the habitat habitat means where they are living so all the cartilaginous fishes generally mostly they are marine they are found in sea water while the bony fishes can be found in marine water as well as they can be found in the fresh water also the second point is endoskeleton as the name is indicating chondrocythes chondrocythes means cartilaginous fishes means their endoskeleton is made up of cartilages while here the name is indicating osteocytes osteocytes means bony fishes means their endoskeleton is bony okay next the exoskeleton in them the exoskeleton is in the form of the scales in chondrocythes class what is that the scales are of placoid type the scales are of placoid type what is placoid placoid means a uh, tooth like okay placoid scales are tooth like and they are backwardly directed they are backwardly directed while here in the case of the bony fishes the three type of the scales may be found cycloid tenoid and genoid in mostly the modern bony fishes cycloid type of the scales are found okay and the tenoid scales tenoid scales and the genoid scales what is there the circular ridges are found in the tenoid scale and in the genoid scales a uh, enamel type a uh, enamel type structure is found that is known as the genoid and that's why they are known as the genoid scale so we can call it is here that the exoskeleton is made up of the placoid scales while here the exoskeleton is made up of cycloid tenoid or genoid scales now the caudal fin caudal means the tail fin now the tail fin is asymmetrical when the tail fin is asymmetrical then it is called as the heterocircle okay or we can say that heterocircle tail okay and here the caudal fin is symmetrical here the caudal fin is symmetrical and hence we use the term homocircle or we can also call it as homocircle tail now what about the mouth so mouth is always ventral on the head or its position is ventral on head and in the bony fishes the position of the mouth is terminal on the head now the gill openings how many gill openings are there so the gill openings in the cartilaginous fishes are 5 to 7 pairs while the gill openings in the bony fishes are only 4 pairs now the air bladder now this air bladder is very important structure this air bladder is also called as the swim bladder okay it has various functions it gives buoyancy to the fishes so they can float on the surface of the water it produces sounds it produces sounds it acts as a respiratory organ also now the cartilaginous fishes are not having the air bladder or the swim bladder in them the swim bladder is absent and because of this reason the cartilaginous fishes have to continuously swim if they will not swim they will sink at the bottom why because they are not having the air bladder because the air bladder gives buoyancy but here the buoyancy organ is absent so they have to continuously swim to avoid sinking while here in the case of the bony fishes the swim bladder or the air bladder is present now operculum operculum is nothing it is also called as gill cover operculum is also called as gill cover now the gill cover is absent totally in the cartilaginous fishes but there is a fish which is known as the chimera which is also called as king of herrings or red fish in chimera what is absent operculum or gill cover is absent one more thing i will be liking to call for the chimera that in chimera the scales are also absent okay but the operculum or the gill cover is the feature of the bony fishes in them the gill cover or the operculum is present now the clasper 
what is clasper clasper is the copulatory organ clasper is the copulatory organ or the mating organ right and it is present in the males of the cartilaginous fishes means it is the feature of the males while the or we can say this claspers are absent totally in the bony fishes okay next one cloaca you must know what is cloaca cloaca is a common aperture cloaca is a common aperture okay and what happens that the urinogenital ducts okay and the different uh, openings open in a common chamber and that is known as the cloaca okay now cloaca is present in the cartilaginous fishes while the cloaca is absent in the bony fishes okay because here the openings are separate here the openings are separate and hence the cloaca is absent now here spiral valves spiral valves are present in the intestine they are also called as the scroll valves okay the role of the spiral valve is to increase the absorptive surface area is to increase the absorptive surface area and these scroll valves are present in the intestine of the cartilaginous fishes while in the intestine of the bony fishes these spiral valves are absent now the ampulla of lorenzini now very important structure known as the ampulla of lorenzini first of all let me tell you where is ampulla of lorenzini present ampulla of lorenzini is present on the dorsal surface of the head it is present on the dorsal surface of the head it is having various role it acts as a thermo receptor it acts as a electro receptor okay it acts as a electro receptor it acts as a thermo receptor it detects the salinity in water it detects the pressure in water etc so this is the ampulla of lorenzini present on the dorsal region of the head okay and the ampulla of lorenzini is the feature of the cartilaginous fishes while the ampulla of lorenzini is totally absent in the bony fishes fertilization now generally we know that fishes are found in water and what we read always that those organisms which are found in water will show external fertilization but this is not always true the the cartilaginous fishes shows internal fertilization the cartilaginous fishes shows internal fertilization while in the case of the bony fishes the fertilization is external now what about the nitrogenous waste so they secrete urea cartilaginous fishes secrete urea and they are secreting or excreting out bony fishes are excreting out the ammonia okay and the external nares external nares means external nostrils okay external nares means external nostrils okay external nostrils right what type of external nostrils are there external nostril now ventral they are nostrils are ventral in position and in bony fishes the external nares or the nostrils are dorsal in position so these were the differences between the cartilaginous fishes and the bony fishes but not only you must know about the differences between the cartilaginous fishes and the bony fishes you must know about the examples also because the examples of the cartilaginous fishes and the bony fishes and their common names are very important because many times question is asked from it so now we are going to study the examples of the cartilaginous fishes and the bony fishes so here are some examples of cartilaginous fishes and the bony fishes the examples are of the cartilaginous fishes the very first most common example is the scolyodon which is also called as the dog fish torpedo it is called as the electric ray why because it has electric organs now the question arises that electric organs are formed by so electric organs are nothing they are the modified masses of the muscle cells trigon it is also called as the sting ray because it is having a sting in front rhinodon it is also called as the whale shark why because of its size it is the biggest shark stegostoma stegostoma is also called as the zebra shark it is also called as the tiger fish because of its demarcations on the body surface rhinobatus it is also called as the guitar fish because it is just seeming to be just like a guitar 
chimera it is also called as the red fish also called as the king of the herrings pristis is called as the saw fish and jagnina or sphena is also called as the hammer fish or hammered hammer headed fish so these are the examples of the cartilaginous fishes scoliodon i am repeating once again scoliodon torpedo trigon rhinodon stegostoma rhinobatus chimera pristis and jagnina or sphena now these are the examples of the bony fishes now see here all are very important examples labio rohita it is also called as the rohu or it is also called as the indian carp the second one is known as the echinus echinus is also called as the sucker fish the third one is known as the clarius clarius is commonly called as the catfish it is a true fish but it is not having any sort of the scales hippocampus hippocampus is called as the sea horse they show parental care on the belly region of the male a brood pouch is present and this brood pouch in the male belly is meant for incubating the eggs okay that's why the the males of the hippocampus are also called as sometime the pregnant males gambusia it is also called as a mosquito fish if we want to control the larvas of the mosquitoes in the stagnant water right so we can drop the gambusia fish at that water why because this gambusia fish is having the tendency to eat the larva of the insect so it will be helpful in the biological control of the insects so gambusia is also called as the mosquito fish exocetus it is also called as the flying fish it never flies as the name is indicating it just glides for few meters why because it has well developed enlarged pectoral fins with the help of the enlarged pectoral fins it can glide for few meters that's why it is called as the flying fish tetradon it is called as the globe fish diodon it is also called as the porcupine fish anabas it is called as the climbing fish or the climbing perch it can also be called it as climbing perch okay anabish is generally called as what the climbing perch or the climbing fish and it is the having the feature that it can live outside water for few days it can live outside water signetus it is also called as the pipe fish fistularia known as the flute fish because it seems to be just like a flute anguilla is also called as the fresh water eel latinaria is the living fossil it is also called as coelacanth on the evolutionary point of view it is very important because it is ancient fit uh, ancient fish and it was caught in the year 1938 at the coast of africa and salmo is also called as the salmon okay so once again i am repeating the examples of the bony fishes labio rohita echinus clarius hippocampus gambusia exocetus tetradon diodon anabas signetus fistularia anguilla latinaria and salmo so dear student this video was actually based on the comparative account of the cartilaginous fishes and the bony fishes along with the examples it will be important for your examination thanks a lot